Alrighty, so I thought I'd have a little look at the way I do diagrams. So even though I've written something about it in uh, an FAQ, which you can get on my website, uh, it doesn't quite explain it thoroughly enough uh, in words. It's quite difficult to explain in words what's going on. So I thought I would do an example, and actually I recorded the entire example. It took an hour and 13 minutes. And I listened to it, and the, the microphone volume was on about 5%, and all you could hear is tshhh. So, um, yeah, uh, that taught me. Um, so uh, you won't get to see quite as many mistakes as in the video that I just deleted, because um, I've actually finished the example that I wanted to do. And now I'm going to retype it, um, principally for your benefit. <laughs> um, hopefully it'll be a bit shorter, though. So, um, just in case you're not familiar, this is a, uh, on the screen at the moment, is an induction machine, single, uh, well, it's a per phase equivalent circuit for an induction machine. Um, and on the right hand side is the uh, PDF output, and on the left hand side is the code, which are the source that has generated it. Um, if you've been reading the FAQ, you'll know that I like to do the diagrams using um, an odd setup, or not an odd setup, a slightly unusual setup um, involving LaTeX because I do most of my reporting and lecture notes and so forth in LaTeX. And I couple that with some other things, so I've lined up a few of them. In the beginning, uh, there was Debian, no, in the beginning, uh, there is TechLive, or TechLive. Um, and I'm on Stretch um, at the moment, um, so you can get Tech Live on Stretch just with the usual method, which is sudo aptitude install um, Text Live, and it will pull down most of what you need. Anything you don't have that's extra, if you go into aptitude, <coughs> sudo aptitude, um, on the command line, you'll get the the command line installer for Debian um, and you can search by pressing F10 to get into the menus and then go to search and you can search for the other tech packages um, the other thing you can do of course is search the Debian website which is fine um, then you want the circuit macros which are the things that actually draw the pictures uh, or contain the, the pictures and this is the manual uh, they're published by uh, Dwight Apovich who is uh, Professor Emeritus in um, Canada, I think. Um, and they are authored by him and published by him as well. And that's the website. You can just type his name into Google. Um, the other thing that I use is a script written by this chap. Um, I won't try and pronounce his name because I'll do it wrong and that would be embarrassing for me. Unfortunately, I've looked quite hard in the process of preparing for this and I can't find the script he wrote because <laughs> he had a very nice website all about the circuits macros um, with some very good examples and uh, it looks like his university have changed their website organization and now I can't find it um, so I will tell you what's in the script that I have of his anyway if you're interested in LaTeX then uh, the LaTeX companion is the place to go um, and there is a later graphics companion. There is also a book written by a chap called Herbert Boss, uh, this book in fact, uh, which is all about PS tricks. Um, you don't have to use PS tricks as your LaTeX intermediary, you can use Teeks um, or something else. In fact, I should pull up Teeks now. It's Teeks with a Z. Um, I have never used it because. PS Tricks did everything that I needed to. Nevertheless, you could use it. Lots and lots and lots of people do. Um, you don't necessarily have to buy the books either. Much of what you need is online. Um, especially if you're prepared to read the, the user manuals for the various PS Tricks modules, which are very good indeed. <coughs> so, if we go back to the Circuits Macros manual, um, there's a nice diagram which shows you the overall workflow. So you make your diagram, and there are some circuits macros which are published by Applevich, and you use the M4 com um, um, processor, we'll call it. 
Um, so this is uh, GNU software. It comes with uh, every Linux distribution. It's widely used, especially in the, the preparation of source code um, for programming applications. Then use the PIC interpreter. Um, and that interprets the M4, which interpreted your macros and the base macros that are published by Applebitch. Um, and he actually wrote a DPIC, which is a, a line drawing uh, PIC interpreter. Um, I think he needed one in a hurry and he decided to write it. So there you go. Um, but there is also GPIC, which is a GNU version. Um, the output of the PIC interpreter goes with your other LaTeX files into LaTeX or PDF LaTeX and that produces um, a DVI in the LaTeX case or a uh, PDF in the in the PDF LaTeX case. Um, it says that it, you can also use TIGs. So that's the overall mechanism and the actual programs. I've got Kyle on the left, so I'm in, in Debian Stretch um, with KDE. So Kyle is my preferred environment, if you like, and Ocular is my preferred viewer. And usually, if I recompiled this code now, Ocular would realize the PDF had changed and it would duly reload the PDF. In fact, there's a setting here. Reload document on file change. But I've only just upgraded to Stretch. Uh, I was on Jesse before. And for some reason, Ocular no longer reopens the files when uh, they've changed which is really frustrating because it means for this video I'm going to have to keep clicking view PDF whereas usually I wouldn't have to I wouldn't have to touch the mouse hardly at all um, when I'm writing the, the code of the diagram but that's how it is I'll figure it out at some point I guess so we can maybe have a little look at a diagram and see how it pans out in terms of the actual writing of it. So this is what I intend to end up with. Um, in the beginning I wouldn't have any stuff so what I'll probably do is uh, I'll cut that to a new document and I'll keep it there just in case I go wrong. Um, I suppose I should save it too but <laughs> tell you what, we'll, we'll, we'll copy the whole thing and save it. Come back. Save it there. No, hang on. no, back we go. There we go. Right, that's safe. So you done. Uh, usually start off with um, that so we've got .ps opens the document then we include two files and these files are written by Applevich and the libcircuit libccc.m4 contains the actual macros so this is if you type resistor um, and then the, the size of the resistor you want uh, the m4 preprocessor will look in libcct to find out what it should do when it finds the word resistor and it will convert it into PIC and then PIC will look at that and go oh yeah this is PIC and it will turn it into uh, PS tricks in my case or TIGS commands, PGF commands if you use TIGS PS tricks.m4 contains stuff related to the converting of the the document into the PS tricks so then we have circuit in it you can go and look at what's in these by the way and you can add to them as well but don't forget if you update your text live distribution um, it may overwrite them so you might want to make your own libraries and include them separately I've got some extras that I put straight into libccc but they're quite small and I just keep a backup somewhere so that if it gets overwritten I can just sudo in add the lines that I want to the end and I don't have to worry about including extra files naturally um, because we're in Linux, everything's on the path, and I don't have to explain to it that these are in USR slash, I don't know, local slash text line slash god knows what, but they're somewhere. In fact, we can go and look where they are. 
there'll probably be a few copies floating about the system. Um, I use sudo to find, which is maybe a bit unwise, but if I don't, it will show me a load of directories that I don't have permission for. Uh, and that will just cloud all the results, uh, which is a pain. So, um, yeah, overkill, but there we go. So, uh, this one here is got my special extras. And yeah, I don't copy the whole file because the file is well out of date. Um, I just copy the bits that I know are mine. This looks very much like the set that I'm on at the moment. So this is okay. So my my latex my latex distribution I actually downloaded and compiled by the looks of things. Did it such a long time ago? I can't remember. <laughs> um, and this one, there was a program called Circuit, um, which I might even be able to run or not. C R K U I T. No? Really? No, nah, apparently not. Um, anyway, I don't use it anymore. I used to, but um, it, it, it did some funny things with certain files that I was pretty sure should work. And um, anyway, I gave up on it, but I did like it. Uh, it doesn't really offer any advantages over the setup that I've got at the moment um, and I'm more content that I can see all parts of the process whereas circuit in an attempt to help the user it hid certain things um, and that when they when it didn't work the way I thought it ought to especially when some things in the system were changed like the circuit macros were updated um, quite a bit it started to not act in a way that I could understand properly and that slowed me down and that was very annoying so I gave up with it but um, you can probably still get it and compile it it doesn't take too long to compile from source not too difficult if you want to um, but I don't use it at the moment so anyway that's where my libcct is living and the other things will be there too I don't know if this is the latest version of the circuit macros by the way um, there's probably a later version because I don't update it very often. I, I don't find a need to. Um, and the PSTRIX.m4 will be there. So if you're using Teaks, there'll be something else like PGF.m4. I, I can't remember exactly, but um, you can look it up in the Circuits Macros Manual, which is this document, which you will definitely, definitely need. Very important. So ideally, you'd have a drawing, not th not this drawing, a drawing on paper with a pen of what it is you want it to look like when you finished and you work off of that. If you don't draw it then you might end up in a bit of bother. On the other hand, this drawing is so trivial, I mean there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, that's actually one, so five, six, seven components and an arrow uh, and some wires. I'll probably be okay. So um, we can start with some comment maybe. Um, state aside and we'll have uh, a wire and we'll use W for wire and it's the first wire so I'll have a one and I'll use line because a line is the, the base command to, to put a line in which is a wire is effectively a line um, we can't say from here well, we can and it would be from the origin but there's no need because we're starting at the origin anyway so we can just say right if you want to go right uh, right with a little underscore on the end will set the drawing direction as well as set the direction of the line. Um, although I may be corrected by Applevich on that. Anyway, the the difference between right like that and right like that is quite important. And if you use the other one, strange things will happen. Um, and if you look in the circuits macros manual, it does explain somewhere what the significance of it is. So I'm not just putting those in for fun. Uh, we'll go right a line width. Line width. Um, and then we'll have a, a dot. So I'll do dot at w1 dot west, and I'll make it this. Uh, this will make it an annulus. This bit at the end. So if I was to press Alt F3, magic things will happen, and I can view the PDF. Sure enough, I've got a line with a, a dot with a an open bit in the middle. 
So what happened just then, I will do it in the, and that's, this is the open, open broadcast studio console, uh, to get rid of that. What happened just then, I'll do it in the console so you can see what, what happened. Um, effectively, we're going to go through the, this bit here. So we start off with, um, I just check it's there. Uh, of course it is there because all the files are there because I did this earlier um, but then found the sound wasn't any good. Um, so the diagram is called induction per phase dot CIR. So we'll clear M4 induction dot CIR and we want it to make it into induction uh, dot M4. Let me just make that a bit wider so it's not quite so ugly. There we go. Uh, and it doesn't complain and then I use pick uh, induction per phase dot pick uh, oh hang on I have to do a thing here I think it's d dash d rather um, induction per phase dot text uh, it doesn't like it I got it wrong because I don't sit and do this a lot uh, this is really only for the benefit of the video but if you go down in the manual uh, tells you P. Whoops. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. P. Pick one. P is obsolete. Oh, that's too sad. What did I? What else have I done wrong? D pick. Ah dear. Yeah. D pick. So there's a pick interpreter that comes with with the distribution. There's GPIC which is the GNU PIC and there's DPIC uh, which is the PIC interpreter. PIC is just a, a, a language for, for writing drawings. Uh, DPIC was written by uh, Dwight Applevich and it's DPIC that I'm intending to use. I've got GPIC and apparently I have PIC too because um, it just ran and was unhappy. Uh, so that one actually worked and if you wanted to you could go and look at the file so I could less um, uh, uh, what's it called? Induction dot uh, M4. So this is the, the CIR has been converted to the M4 ending with M4, and what this looks like is a lot of my code that I wrote in Kyle has been converted into pick statements. Um, it's not appreciably longer, but this is really the only bit that's here. So I've got instead of my dot at, it's a circle with a certain radius um, and a certain set of fill commands. So this this is an M4 command, and M4 has to, oh, it's a macro rather, and it lives either in in the libccc or in the pstricks.m4, and the M4 compiler has looked at all this and converted that into this PIC code. That's fine. So then I can less the uh, that one I just looked at. No, this is the next stage. So this is after, or well just before PIC has a go at it. Um, so now I've got. Sorry. Is that the right one? It's not the one I just looked at. Yeah, cool. Um, so this is after pick has had a go at it. This is uh, PS tricks we're looking at now. I think. Maybe. <laughs> um, so this is a set of commands that will be interpreted by PS tricks in order to make it into tech. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Anyway, all this stuff boils down to my line with its attendant ring on the end. Uh, and then if we look at the tech document, this is PS trick. So that other stuff must have been pick. You don't really need to pay any attention to any of this. It's just to show you how the files change. I certainly don't spend a lot of time looking at it. Um, and this has. PS line, PS arc, that sort of thing, they're PS tricks commands. And this you put straight into your LaTeX document, and this would be compiled by LaTeX, uh, and your image would appear in your LaTeX uh, output, your, your um, DVI or your PDF, depending on if you're using uh, 
uh, PDF LaTeX or or just LaTeX. So that's the that's what's happening when I press Alt F3. How it happens when I press Alt F3 is that I have configured Kyle um, to do certain things when I press that button. So it runs M4CM with these options. M4CM is the a uh, a Python script which is written by Associate Professor Randovic, um, which I now can't find. But it, you've seen the lines that I typed. It's it's just a flash version of that really. And if we uh, go and find it, it will be in my bin directory. Uh, I might actually come. No, I won't come back to this. Um, so it's M4CM, I can less that too. And yes, yeah, Python script. So there are options and it deals with the parameters you give it and it can make PNGs and JPEG and all the rest of it. And then you can tell it where you want to put the output and that sort of thing. Um, it doesn't have to be this complicated, but in this case, he provided it and it was on the internet for a while, so I used it and I like it. I still use it. And I hope I don't lose it because I can't find it again. Uh, DPIC is also here, it's compiled down, and you can get the source code for that from uh, Professor Applevich's site. So that's what's going on there. Then I just click View PDF and it appears. This is about as streamlined as I could get it, and it's it allows me to concentrate on the drawing and not so much on the endless compilation and and adjusting languages that happens in the background. So we can carry on now and maybe add our uh, our resistance. So we'll have the, the status series resistance. So we use resist or res typing and talking, not gonna happen. Um, from W1 dot east, which is this side, uh, right because we're going to go that way. Uh, line width times one and a half, no, times one. Uh, and it'll be a European star resistor, and I'll label it uh, R sub S sub S. And this labeling is um, standard LaTeX, and we're already in math mode, so you don't need uh, dollar signs to put it into math mode. And I've got to have the curly braces because if you ask LaTeX to subscript a subscript, it doesn't know which subscript it ought to apply, the ordering of the subscript. So you have to tell it that um, S sub S is all a subscript of R, and you do that using the curly braces, otherwise it will throw an error. You don't have to have a semicolon there, um, but if you want to put another command on that line, you would have to have a semicolon. So if I Alt F3, Alt 3 that, if it doesn't end well, I'll get an error code down here. Uh, usually at this point Ocular would update the picture without me having to do anything. And I wouldn't have to use the mouse but as it is Ocular has for some reason decided that it doesn't like this updating of the, uh, the diagram automatically despite the fact that it is in fact uh, set to do it. There must be something I've not got installed having updated to stretch. Um, whoops, I'll figure that out later. Uh, then we'll have the leakage inductance. Uh, inductor from rs dot east right line width uh, times one. I might make them longer later. Um, and I can have a, a W gives it a bit more of a wordy look to the inductor. You can set the number of turns the inductor has, the picture of the inductor has and all sorts and you can find out the various commands in the circuit macros helps if I went inductor uh, so I can have a W which is where see if I zoom in a bit uh, see how the arc ends and another arc begins and there's, there's definitely uh, a change in the gradient there here the the changing gradient there is a changing gradient but it's continuous here it's abrupt um, this is what I'd get if I didn't put anything in that looks just so ugly it's horrible um, so you won't use that one 
otherwise if you keep going all the way to the bottom um, eventually okay let's go there is a full set of syntax for everything and it gives you all the options uh, so under I will be inductor and it gives you all your options and where you can go and look for it it's an excellent document brilliant um, state uh, leakage inductance right I haven't got it open. There we go. There we go. And then we can carry on. So we might want to do a parallel setup for the. Actually, I quite like that to be a bit longer. That's better. Whoops. Maybe we might also want to do the branch current. For the resistance, so we can have B current. Uh, we'll call it IS because it's a state of current. And um, you can set certain things, but I'll just show you what that looks like first. Uh, so maybe you want it to be on the other side. You can have end, and we'll have to have it facing um, outwards because it has to flow that way. It has to flow that way towards the inductor from the resistor because otherwise I'll be changing the direction of it um, which is fine, I could but that's not conventional ah, clearly got that wrong let's try that the other way around, shall we? there we go uh, if you did decide for some reason you wanted to flow in the other direction you could try that it would work quite nicely uh, but I'm happy with it how it was in the beginning um, because that's the, the usual setup that you'd have for this sort of diagram so we can carry on then and maybe do some parallel stuff I hardly ever use the parallel command in fact the first time I used it was earlier today when I did this uh, video previously but screwed up the sound um, This is the, the example that's given, but I will just uh, copy it from before, if I can find it. Uh, it would have been there. Hmm. Well, that doesn't bode well. Where did that disappeared off to? Oh, you typical. <laughs> Oops. Induction machine model underscore back dot CR. So where can I find it? Click open now and make a file. That's really weird. Oh no, you're just trying to frustrate me.
Sometimes I really hate Linux. Can't express it in words. No, wrong one. Oh, well, at least that's opening things. We have another go at that. Oh, we'll start from here, shall we? Okay, good. I didn't want to stay in that directory anyway. I mean, why would I? Why on earth it wouldn't open that in Kyle, I do not know. Very strange. Anyway, there we go. I will steal that bit of code. And edit that bit of the video, I think. So we now need, if we look at where we are at, um, a small wire off down here to allow us to open our parallel branch up. So we'll have uh, wire no, line uh, from L L dot east down line width. Line width is defined. Um, I'm not sure actually where it's defined, but it's defined somewhere, and it, it tells you in the circuits macros manual where it's defined and what it's defined to. Down with down a quarter of a line width. Um, and we've got a little line drop down and then we can copy in the set the direction of the drawing next drawing move to downwards and then I have the parallel combination of the magnetizing resistance which is a European style resistor drawn in the downward direction of line width times one and a half length uh, labelled with uh, oh no I've got my labelling different who did that? There we go. Um, saved. And uh, and a inductor who is reversed, uh, so it's drawn from the other direction. Uh, and that's done in order that it points the right way because the inductor's got a, a side with the rings and a side with the pointy bits. And when I looked at the drawing previously, I thought, I don't like how it looks. I'd much rather it was the other way up. And also I can show the use of the reversed macro. Um, so everything has to be in quotes so you've got usually you'd have inductor open brackets and then the, the line specification for it but here you've got reversed open brackets back tick name of the element uh, single quote comma open back tick and then all the line spec until the next comma so in the case of the inductor you've got I have uh, W as the third parameter because I like it to be, look the loopy one as opposed to the normal one which I think is horrible so you'd have to close a quote the comma then a back tick then a W then the close and you carry on in that fashion and it draws it the other way up um, I might delete it and show it and then I labelled it uh, so if I was to run that um, that's what you end up with which is and ugh, the inductor is uh, is facing to the left whereas if I was to I'll just pull that down for a minute, copy it from there, put it back up. That hash is a quote is a comment. If I did inductor down line, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that, uh, get rid of that and that. Is that right? No. Need that and that because they go with the parallel. You can get um, somewhere, I think from the Applevich's site, a, a colouring kit for Kyle, it might have been for somewhere else, um, which will colour this, in fact I might even have it, um, you never know. Highlighting, could it be, markup, whoops, markup, it would probably be called circuits macros or something like that. I definitely had it. It may be that um, it's been washed away with the change to stretch. Ha, <laughs> there's a script called chicken. Who knew? Hmm. 
Hmm. Well, I've seen it on the web. I don't rem remember where it is right now. Um, so if I was to run that, it would probably fail. Nope. Worked. Uh, and you can see the inductor is the the other way up. Uh, or rather, it faces the other direction. And I thought that was uglier than that. And because it's my decision, I decided to change it um, and have it reversed, which is how it was to start with. So I'll just go back to there. And that should compile. The trick with having a reasonable result in a shortish time period with this, having actually bothered to do all the setup for the various packages and LaTeX and all the rest of it. Um, only try and compile small things or in small steps. Compile it regularly is what I mean. Because if you write five or six lines you will certainly make a mistake unless you've had lots and lots of practice. Um, and you've got to then go back and find out which mistake the line is which line the mistake is on uh, it just makes things more difficult so next thing is a little wire from here downwards same as this one um, we're up to number three for wires line down uh, we should probably say uh, from MB magnetizing branch dot end the, if you go back into the document you can see this is called start and that's called end um, so I'm using that little tag there um, for it to tell, to tell it where I want this line to be drawn and it will be line width over 4 and there it is so then I can have another a wire line from uh, w3 dot south left to I want it to come to just here which is in line with this dot which is the the westmost end of w1 but I want it to be in y coordinates not to have changed from its original point so I can do uh, in x it's w1 dot west comma w3 dot uh, south and I can ask for a dot on the end of the line um, I can even I don't say I w4 dot west better not to use here too much because here it could move if I was to insert some extra code between that semicolon and the start dot and I had written a dot at here here would have moved along with the drawing and it wouldn't be right anymore so it's better if you cannot use here too much. And then, yeah, I've got the line there. Um, so then we can have a line from maybe here across to a transformer, which will be coupling to the the rotor. So we can maybe do uh, W five so line from uh, now. What is this little stubby bit here called? W2 W2 dot N north right uh, line width and then we can maybe have a transform which we'll call T1 uh, trans or is it trans trans transformer no transformer there we go um, don't use transformer very often down line width times 2. It's times 2 because I've got a quarter of a line width here, I've got one and a half line widths there, and I've got a quarter of a line width there, and I want the transformer to move from there to there, but be spaced just off the right hand side of the diagram at the moment. Um, I know that because I did it earlier, <laughs> and I had to think about it. Um, you could even try and explain, instead of setting this in stone, you could make it work out how far it has to go by telling it where you want it to end but I'm not going to do that, I'll leave it as is it would end up looking something like that only with different variables um, I won't do anything else yet but there'll be some, some extra things to go in here with dot p1 at uh, w5 dot 
east. So the east end of a line is W5. W5 is going to go from there over somewhere, and then I'm going to have the hang transformer hanging off the end of it. So let's try for that. Uh, it didn't work. Why didn't it work? Which line is at fault? Comment the last line and run it. It works, so there's something wrong here. Transformer. Spelt it right. Let's have a look at the manual. What did I do wrong? We could steal this one for a bit and see how we pan out with that. Oh. No, I shouldn't have to do anything on that. Down line. Just for a second, we'll delete where we want it to. Really? Okay. Hmm. T R I N S F O R F O R. <laughs> Idiot. F O R M E R. You look at the code and you see what you want to see. <laughs> ah dear. Good. Right. Okay. So it's it's a it's a little bit too close to the the magnetizing branch, and this is the horrible inductor that I don't like to look at. So we can increase the length of W5 to one and a half line width and I might be able to put a W in there, that work? No, the W doesn't work so it must be something else that I've got to do. A L W D What does the D stand for? Oh okay, hang on, it's an extra comma because I've got a few other bits and pieces. How many extra commas? Line spec comma, comma, W. So it's two commas. Comma, comma, W. So I run... Ooh, hello. That didn't work. One comma? But one comma doesn't do anything. But one comma works. What's missing? No spec L R N P. Oh, comma, comma, comma. Three commas. Capped it? No. Probably counts as advertising. Um, there we go. So then I need to put a line in there, and we need to do the rotor side. So we can. I'll try to finish it fairly swiftly. Uh, line from T1 dot P2 uh, to uh, W. Four dot east. So this this T one dot P two business. Um, if you look here, P one is the primary up a bit, and there's a dot if you want it. Then there's a center tap, and I'm just reading off this diagram what the various points that I want to join the lines to are. Uh, op amp has the IM one, IN two, out, and power rails if you want it, and that sort of thing. So you can just look at the circuit macros manual; it will tell you everything really. Um, so that's that line should be done with. So then we'll try to do the rotor, rotor side, and um, we'll have a inductor and resistor. So we'll have L. Uh, what L are we up to? Looks like it's L two. And L two will be uh, inductor. You see, from uh, T1 dot S1 right line width times 1.5 uh, W labeled left labeled um, L uh, L R and then we'll have a resistor which will be RR I could call it R2 but I used RS up here so um, yeah resistor from L2 dot east yeah um, down 
line width times two European star resistor left labeled R sub uh, I really want to call it the rotor series because it is, but okay, we will. R S R. Wow, that's not going to confuse anybody. <laughs> Never mind. Um, it's only a model. <laughs> and then we need a wire which will run from the bottom of that resistor back to the bottom connection of the secondary of the transformer. So we'll have a wire 7 is line from rr.s to t1.s2 I should be able to build that and it built without error which is uh, a fluke and it's right as well which is ace so there we are I could probably make that a bit smaller actually if I wanted to um, I won't though I like the space in here looking the same as the space in there I think it adds a certain something RSS, RSS, yeah, fair enough. Fine. So, last thing. VRO. VRO. Uh, from W4. Uh, dot west to W1. Dot west. Zero. And I can add a label. V phase just need to catch the P and the H with the subscript obviously I wouldn't be developing loads of these windows um, if Ocular could see the file changing maybe it's the permissions thing anyway I'll have a look at it in a bit so it should be right label because I want it to be on the other side no, click the wrong button. Alt three. Um, there, it's on the on the the left side, which is the correct side for me. Um, you could put the turns ratio in, I guess, if you want to, but it's not usual to do that. I might shorten this distance a bit because it looks weirdly long. Uh, I shouldn't need to shorten the other W four because it knows where to look because I told it calculate the, the width of the, the length of the line rather than setting it explicitly that doesn't look too bad the space between these two maybe could shrink well, maybe not and there we are that's how you do it so this this VR thing um, is my own invention it's it's only five lines of code um, and it allows me to put arrows in with an easy syntax if you and I, I just written it straight into libcct, and if I ever update the circuits macros, it'll get overwritten. So I have to remember to save it. But if you wanted to do that without an arrow function, uh, you could do move from w four dot west up line width over four um, line from here naughty um, up. Oops, I missed out there. Uh, line width times 1.5 uh, with an arrow on the end and then you could probably do uh, V th something like this no, nope, that one I need to enter math mode now um, at uh, we'll call this um, A1 because it's an arrow a1.c I'll just run that that isn't what V arrow does by the way V arrow um, is an invisible resistor so it draws a resistor but it's invisible and then it draws an arrow afterwards and it's actually the resistor that you are putting the the label on because you can't label the line directly otherwise here I would have typed L label and labeled the line um, 
the L label is is a macro which expects to label another circuit's macro, but line is a DPIC um, command which is it just passes through M4, um, so you can't label it. Uh, so I faked it that way, which is dirty as hell, but <laughs> works. Um, so if you have a look at that, you can see there are some slight differences in the two implementations. Um, not that they make a blind bit of difference, of course. The uh, the arrows are slightly different lengths, and the, the text is in a slightly different spot. But if I comment out the arrow command that's mine, um, you can see it looks perfectly acceptable. And you could even uh, write something to do it without having to use a new command. Anyway, so that would be one solution. So that's how I do my diagrams. If I am doing a graph, say, of not some data, but I want to do a graph for display purposes um, in some lecture notes or in a report of some kind, um, and it's not a line drawing like a circuit diagram, uh, I actually do it slightly differently. This is one I prepared earlier. So this is some LaTeX um, using the standalone class um, with all the PS trick stuff loaded up. Um, and it's a, a PS picture. So the book for this, if you want the book, is uh, that one. Uh, but you can also get the the. Uh, so for example, I can go in here and say uh, PS uh, PS plot manual um, PST plot. Yeah, that would be the one. Um, so there's the package, and you can get the package document. This is CTAN. If you use LaTeX and you don't know what CTAN is, um, you should definitely Google that. Uh, there it is. And, and, and this guy too. Uh, it tells you how to use it, and it's a, a manual of the, of the plotting functions that are currently in PS Tricks. Um, so they're very good. You don't necessarily have to buy the book. So I'm using some of them here. I'm reading in some data, and this data is taken from Spice, um, and it's a ZTX six five three output characteristics that I've generated using LT Spice. Then I set up some axes. I plot some lines. This plotting here is a plot of this data, and this data is just CSV in files, and this is the number of millivolts for the base emitter junction, um, and that we're plotting VC against IC effectively. Then it looks like I do some uh, labeling of the axes, and then I've got a couple of other axes, and this set of axes is rotated by 90 degrees um, because that R put covers that line there. Uh, so all of this is is written directly in PS tricks, and if I was to compile it, I'd do it with LaTeX. So I'd press Alt 2, which runs just LaTeX, not PDF LaTeX. Um, then Alt 4 would make the DVI into a PS a postscript file and then all 8 would turn the postscript into a PDF and then I had to click view PDF and out pops the file and I do indeed have a rotated axis um, the other thing that happens in this diagram is if you go back to the the PS picture it says algebraic at the top and that's that's the size of the diagram um, if you look down certain lines like this one here I asked it to plot an equation so it plots between 0 and 2 pi, 2.9 times sine 2.1x uh, minus pi. And that is this bit here, this line. It's plotted sideways on. And it's R put 90 is above to turn it round. And it turns it about a set of coordinates. And that lines it up with the, the graph axes. So the, the line is not actually plotted on the axis. It just so happens that the line overlays the axes in the right spot, which I suppose is cheating to some extent, but what are you going to do? Um, so I can, I don't need to provide data for this sine wave, it is a sine wave as exactly as if I've made a sine wave in MATLAB and exported it as a CSV and then imported it in here, and it's the same with exponentials. If I've got exponential functions for first order systems that I want to demonstrate they will definitely be exponential whereas if I was in uh, I don't know, Visio or something dear maybe if you want some open source GUI what you see is what you get sort of thing um, 
you will have to draw a visa probably and then you have to get the mouse and drag the, the points to where you can influence the shape of the beezer around and try to make them look nice and if you want two of them and they need to look the same like you've got a, a charging and discharging a capacitor for example through a resistor um, due to a pulse then you need to to make them look the same and you might try to do that by copying it and then rotating it having pasted it in it uh, okay sure if you want it to look really nice it will take some time and if you want it to look nice this way it will take some time and you just decide which way you like best I like this way because I will never lose these files they're in my Dropbox which backs itself up although if you look now it's actually struggling to back up for some reason <laughs> um, and they're text so they're uncorruptible and I'm never not going to have the capability to compile them because LaTeX and PS tricks have been around for years and years and they're free and open source which is nice um, thanks to a lot of people's hard work whereas uh, programs come and go even Microsoft programs eventually run out of steam and get shelved um, if you don't remember an example I give you Microsoft Works let's have a quick look. I don't know if anybody actually remembers it anymore but uh, if you bought a computer um, in say like, I don't know 1995 through 2000 or so um, from like Time or Tiny or one of the computer companies that were around then in the UK chances are it came with Windows 95 or Windows 98 or possibly even Windows 98 SE if it came with Windows Millennium best thing you do is throw that off a bridge um, but um, you usually got Microsoft Works because they didn't give away Office Office existed of course um, yeah so there you go last release 10 years ago 2007 wow it lived a long time after I remember it uh, it was bloody useless there's no other way to say it was and the, the files that it saved you couldn't open them in Word or PowerPoint or anything like that you could only open them in Works and it was utter crap so Microsoft products do get canned every now and then um, and Microsoft is one of the biggest software companies there is so I like to have my diagrams written out in text format righty email me if you've got any questions